we're good to go. So hi folks, welcome to the advanced filmmaking session for our virtual open house. Uh, I have Romy Gulem with me from the program, so I'll, I'll let him take the reins here. Okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna start right away. We'll go into a PowerPoint and I'll do a presentation on uh, you know, how our program runs and what you would uh, expect in a year with the advanced filmmaking program. And then we'll have time for some, some questions via the chat box uh, at the end. So am I switched to my PowerPoint now? Uh, you'll have to click the uh, show button. In the, so if you hit the sharing in the control panel and click show and then your PowerPoint. I don't see that. The show button is un under where? Sharing. So on the control panel, sharing, click that down. And then uh, there's a button show, like a play and a stop button. So if you click play, and then on the drop down, there's a bunch of options. Under webcam? No. No, it's the, it should be the top one, sharing. I don't see a sharing button. I see attendees, audio, webcam. Stop sharing, sharing my webcam. Dashboard, sharing dashboard attendees, audio, webcam, polls. Questions, chat, webcams. Um, screenshot, no. Okay, that's strange. We just had it working. Yeah. Um, I do not have your presentation, so I can't share it from my end. So you you uh, switched to share for me to share, right? Yep, you're the presenter. No. And you don't see that. No. Nope. Well, our rehearsal went really well. <laughs> I apologize for what's happening right now. Um, I can share your video because I have access to that, but I cannot share your your PowerPoint. And I'm sp and on the on the Go Webinar Control Panel, I should see something that says Share. Sharing, yeah, it should be the top one. Um, sharing dashboards, attendees, audio, webcam, polls, handouts, chat. No, mine starts with attendees. Did you maybe pop the uh, sharing one out somewhere? Like you can pop them out of their uh, the control panel? Not that I know of. Um, it may take a minute, but you could try emailing me the PowerPoint and I can put it up. Oh, Where, see. if I popped it out, you have. Do you have sharing options now? Here, share, share my screen. Okay, that, there we go. That a window just popped up there, so perfect. Uh, can we All confirm right. that everyone can see this then, or we'll just assume? Yes, we are forward? good to go. Okay, so sorry about the delay, everyone. Um, so, advanced filmmaking program. So this is for. Basically, this is the information you were already given about the fact that your, your microphones are muted. So the overall look at our program, it's a 37-week intensive hands-on program. And the key is hands-on. We, we focus on the idea of making films as much as possible. It's three semesters. I'll go into each of those semesters, how they break down in a bit. Uh, upon completion, you would receive an Ontario College Graduate Certificate. And because it's a, a postgraduate program, you need a, a university degree or a college diploma in a related field. Um, on the website, at the Fan Fanshawe website, you can find a list of what we consider related fields, but it's pretty broad. We've had photography students, theater students, um, graphic design students. So we, we we're pretty open. It's not just film theory and uh, television and broadcasting students who are eligible. 
so the fall is called level one and we focus uh on the creation of documentary films how they're done and we do them so that's this is the term we're in right now and so i'm in the middle of making documentary films with our students that are enrolled this year in level two we focus on making narrative films and then the third semester is a an eight-week semester it's half a semester that's just may june and in that period you do an internship or a capstone project so we have a, a lot of I'll, I'll go into each of these individually so in level one in the fall some of the courses you take are cinematography editing production production is a pretty broad topic i mean you, you might understand what cinematography is and editing but production kind of covers a, a large part of the whole process of making documentary films production sound how to record audio for these films uh, creative resourcing is all part of uh, the paperwork and the documents involved in making it people in the process is uh, the crews the people everything that is necessary to make the films the business of media is a, a business course about the Canadian film industry, so it focuses on uh, how the Canadian film industry works. And writing for media is split into two parts. The first half is uh, writing for documentaries, and the second half is writing for narrative films. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, the reason we have the second half as narrative films is because in the winter we'll make the narrative films but the screenplays get written in the fall so that we're ready with screenplays to go in the winter there's one uh, theory course which is documentary film history and then there's a one last pro co course called project development and this uh, is one where we we do special workshops so it's not a weekly class it ends up being full day workshops spread out through the semester for example uh IATSE which is the big film union in Canada uh certifies our students to be able to work on IATSE films that doesn't mean they're they're union members but they're they have a permit to work whenever there's overflow whenever they need more uh crew members and so in the fall the students are certified as permittees with the union uh, so I mentioned already that we focus on documentary film production. We start the year by uh, by week four, we're making mini documentaries. We're making the first documentaries of the semester. And then the major semester documentaries. So uh, today being Monday, this is the first day of our production block. I'll talk about how we do our productions, but basically our semester is broken down like a film with pre-production where you come up with your ideas, you develop your ideas and you prepare your ideas. And then we do three weeks of production. Uh, so for the next three weeks, the students don't go into any classes. They're on sets, they're making films. They're either making the film that they pitched. Uh, so if, if let's say we're doing a three day production right now, you might be the director, but then on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you might be doing sound on another person's film. Next week, you might be the director of photography. And so you work on other people's films as well as your own. That's how we want everyone to, to learn as many of the crew positions as possible. And then the, the screenplay writing happens in the second half. And then we do a lot of collaborations with other programs. So for example, the theater program and our program are very tight we do a lot of work together and the first project we do together is um, a staged reading of the screenplays and so every student in the advanced filmmaking program will write a screenplay and then we get them over to the theater program and acting students get the screenplays and our students get to hear actors read the screenplays which helps them develop it even further and that's the IATSE certification, the union certification that I had mentioned. As well, we also bring in a lot of guest speakers, uh, mostly from Toronto, but now um, we've discovered that online uh, guest speakers is a really great way to do it. So now we're getting guest speakers from 
all over the country. All of the faculty are, are people who have worked in the industry. So we all have a lot of connections and we bring in people that we've worked with and that we know in the industry as guest speakers throughout the whole year. So I've mentioned that we structure it like a production with pre-production, production and post-production. The first five weeks is the development and the pre-production, three weeks of production, and then we wrap it up with post-production. So during the production stage, uh, I said that the students don't have any classes, but instead of classes, the faculty go to where they're making their films. So for example, on Saturday, there was one crew that started a bit early because there was an event that involved their project. Uh, this student's making a documentary on this sport called disc golf, and there was a tournament on Saturday. So instead of being in classes, they go to their location to shoot, and then I went and spent the day with the students at the location where they were making their documentary, and I advised them, and basically the classroom just ends up being a real location. So um, we talked about that. I showed four to six film. Oh, no, we didn't. So we shoot four to six films per week, so uh, Monday to Thursday, and then Friday to Sunday. Everyone gets a chance to be producer, director, director of photography, gaffer and grip, and sound recordist on many of the films. And then in post-production, we, we screen and critique all of the films. And so the, uh, all of the students will watch each other's films with a panel of three professors who will each give feedback on that stage of the editing. So we, we screen a first rough cut. All three professors give feedback on what they'd like to see changed for the next stage. And then we watch a second rough cut. And then again, the three professors give feedback. They show us a fine cut that they're hoping is pretty close to finished. They get more feedback. And then they present us with a locked picture, which is the, the final picture that we're going to hand on to the audio post-production students, which is another the collaboration we do. We have a program called Audio Post-Production where students are specializing in sound creation and mixing and music. And so those students then take the documentaries and they do sound editing, music composition, and the audio mix. In the winter, we have level two. The courses in level two are directing, so directing narrative films as opposed to documentaries. Cinematography two, which is the continuation and the transition from shooting documentaries to shooting narrative films, the same with editing and production. It's the same idea, but with a lean towards narrative films. Career planning is the, the beginning of looking for uh, creating resumes and cover letters and all of those things, but also uh, preparing the students to start their research on what kind of internships they would be interested in doing and what kind of careers they want to explore upon completion of the program. Marketing and distribution is uh, mainly about creating a film festival that we do every year. The students each do posters and do uh, electronic press kits for their own films, but uh, the big project is our year-end film festival, which is a, a big event that takes place in a theater in London and uh, it's, it's grown every year and it's a, it's a huge event for us. And so that's what the marketing and distribution course focuses on. Production logistics is all about how to organize your narrative film. The Canadian Narrative Cinema is the one theory course that the students take uh, this semester. And there's more project development and additional workshops. So sometimes that's 16 millimeter film or uh, green screens, or we get in a, a specialist on some topic that we haven't covered. So the focus is on narrative films in the, the winter. We, we start the year right away, in the first week with a 48 hour film challenge. We get the advanced filmmaking students together with the theater students with the audio post-production students and the visual effects and editing students. So we usually have about 100 to 120 students from those four programs. And we make groups that are a mixture of all four programs. So they all get to work together. They're all strangers. 
they get a chance to work with these people and they have 48 hour 48 hours to make a film and then we have a screening on the friday night and it's uh it's a lot of fun it's not something that they can prepare for or work on afterwards so it's a great icebreaker after the holidays to get everyone back into the mood of uh, classes and working on films uh, just like the, the documentary production block we have our our major narrative production block where we produce narrative films in the same way that we produced our documentaries uh, um, with the narrative films the crews are a little bit bigger and so uh, each student again gets to try different crew positions as well as uh, the film that they're making we do some 16 millimeter workshops green screen workshops we do a, a field trip to Toronto, an overnight two-day field trip where we visit a lot of the facilities uh, and, and rental houses in Toronto that anyone would be dealing with. Uh, whether they end up in Toronto or elsewhere, this, these, these, these large-scale facilities are, are very similar. And we have many guest speakers uh, in this semester as well. And I've mentioned the annual film festival. It's called the First Take Film Festival. So just like the documentaries, we structure the semester like a production with pre-production, production, and post-production. Um, the first four weeks of production, larger crews. Uh, they, the positions they might have on a, a narrative film, producer, assistant director, director, director of photography, gaffer grip, so that's the lighting and the, the grips, camera assistants, and script supervisor. And then the third semester is the shorter one. It's just May, June, and the students either choose to do an internship or a capstone project. Uh, they can The capstone project would be one more film if they felt like they wanted to, to spend their time doing one more film. We have some students who prefer that idea since they have access to the facilities and all of our equipment. Uh, but the majority of our students are, are looking forward to the internship at that point. And, to get a foot in the industry. And for the inter internships, uh, we do have a, a pretty large database of companies that we have a record of uh, getting students internships with. So I've mentioned several times that we have collaborations with these other programs. We have the theater arts program, the audio post-production program, and we work with the visual effects and editing students. So at this point, we can watch this video. Um, this is a tour of our facility, so I'll talk you through it. It's silent, but I'll narrate it. So hopefully you can hear me. Yes, okay, so uh, let it begin. All of the classes for the Advanced Filmmaking Program are on the Oxford Street uh, campus in M building, which is this building here that's at the east end of the campus. Uh, there's several entrances to the building and uh, we'll, we'll walk in through this door here. That This is the front entrance of M building and we'll start the tour on the second floor. We'll start with our loans facility. So this is where the students get their equipment from. Uh, one of the really nice things about our program is that we constantly update our equipment so that it's state of the art. It's what's current in the industry so here we're seeing we're seeing all these lenses that we have access to and then we'll go down these different rows here these are all cameras these are there's these facilities are for more than just our program um, we have the the highest end cameras for our program because it's the advanced program but those two rows these are all tripods on the left and then at the back here it's all our grip equipment and our lighting equipment and the sound equipment here on the right and students can access uh, loans during regular business hours but they can take out equipment for up to 48 hours or longer if it includes a weekend so if we go out the door here and then down the hallway this will take us to two of the rooms that you the students would most likely be in so oh we've got a freeze frame here Romy, you're uh, muted, actually. It remuted you when it paused. Oh, 
Okay, so uh, these are the two classrooms that you're you're going to be seeing the most as a student. It's also the rooms that you use to edit. Uh, off to the end, there's two there's three edit suites that you can book out 24 hours a day to work on your projects in private. Um, but these last two rooms we saw were our classrooms and uh, editing facilities. So these are the three edit suites, and then. This will take us back into the hallway and down the stairs to, this is a control room that's uh, used by the television broadcasting students. So we only use it as a set. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice looking place to work and to shoot. So sometimes we use it as a set. This is what we call the pit. So these are all computers that students have access to 24 hours a day. My office is just there on the right. There's a boardroom here where students can book out and, and have uh, production meetings uh, or any of uh, meetings that, uh, for projects that they're working on. At this end here, there are two edit suites that students can book out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, more faculty offices here, and then we go up the stairs to two more of the private edit suites. These are edit suites one and two. These are the two biggest edit suites we have. So students have access to this and to edit suite one here. And then if we go down this last hallway, we'll finish in, this is one of our two studios. This is the smaller of the two studios. We do classes in here and students can book these when there's no classes in. And this is our large studio that television broadcasting students work in here so we can see their cameras. Um, so cinematography classes are in this studio. It's one of the largest studios uh, west of Toronto in the south. So it's, it's, it's a really large facility. It's a great room. When we come around here, you'll get a better sense of how big it is. And again, when there's no classes in here, you're free to book this uh, to do your productions, to, to shoot your films or to shoot your projects. That should take us out. That's good for the, the video. So I've made you the presenter again and we're right back. Oh, that was that okay. worked even better. Oh, we went we didn't have to start over. Excellent. So that's that's basically our facilities. That's uh where you'll spend most of your time. Is I'm seeing my cameras. Am I oh there we go. You're still good. It's it's yeah, still working. Yeah. Okay, so it's working. Thank you. Uh, so just a few testimonials from some alumni. Kyle Scott is uh, working with the CFL. He's the video production supervisor at the CFL, and he went through our program, and he did uh, a university degree at Brock. So if you want to read this, or I can read it. My Brock Film Studies education was extremely valuable in many ways, but there's absolutely no chance. I would be where I am today without the technical know-how and hands-on learning that the advanced filmmaking program at Fanshawe gave me. Christian Trenier is also an alumni. He moved out to Vancouver right after graduating and joined IATSE. Uh, he actually has a, a, a documentary that's going to be playing at the Whistler Film Festival. He just sent us a notice, so great news for Christian. He's also um, a field producer for this hour is 22 minutes. So from the very first week at Fanshawe, we were learning how to use high-end production cameras and industry standard editing software, all with the guidance of teachers who have tons of real world onset experience. I finished school feeling fully prepared to get out into the world and start working. Adriana Skender is another student uh, from the same year as Christian and she moved out to Vancouver as well and she works in the union as a set decorator now. I had an incredible experience with while attending Fanshawe. I learned so much and made so many new friends. Fanshawe allowed me to see my potential in the film industry and helped me find the department that most interests me. During my internship, I was able to take my new skills to the West Coast, and a year later, I'm on I'm now a member of a set tech department in IATSE working on a big name show, Supergirl. Taylor Gordon's another uh, great student that we had. Uh, she's 
she's spending a lot of her time working up in the Sudbury area, which is a really hot area for, for production. You quickly figure out where you'd thrive on a film set and have the freedom to start specializing in those roles. With such small class sizes, Fanshawe gives you a tightly knit network that lasts well into your career. If you take advantage of the wealth of resources AFN puts at your fingertips, it positions you to hit the ground running once you graduate, so your entrance into the industry is that much smoother. Other students, uh, alumni, where they are, I won't read all of these to you. I'll give you a minute to read these over, but uh, these are jobs that our alumni, I keep in touch through Facebook with our alumni, so this is what they're up to. These are the kinds of jobs that they've found so far. Okay, I'll move on. This this will be available if you wanted to check that out. So our slogan is at Fanshawe, you won't just be studying films, you'll be making films. Um, if you'd like to see some Fanshawe, yeah, I'll, I'll have my email address available. If you'd like to see some examples of uh, student work, I can send you a link to uh, some films. Are there any questions? All right, well, I'll jump back in here. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, you actually answered some questions just in that last couple slides there. Um, one I will ask you is, what are the distinct advantages of the advanced filmmaking program at Fanshawe? Uh, uh, for, I'd say that one of the, the, the big advantages is how hands-on it is. You know, we, the, the way we like to say it is we'll talk a little bit about films and then we'll do a lot about films and then we'll talk about it some more. But it's all about getting the students making films and not just being the director. The, the, the big advantage is that there are all those other crew positions that I talked about so that when they do graduate, they've, they're not planning on being a director because that's not the entry level positions. It's all of those camera assisting and script supervisor or sound person that are the jobs that are, they're going to get when they get into the industry. Uh, another big advantage is that everyone who teaches in this program uh, has worked in the industry. I'm a filmmaker, my colleagues are filmmakers, and we came to teaching after careers uh, as filmmakers. The collaborations we have with those other programs, uh, I think that's a pretty unique thing about our program. Um, you know, a lot of student filmmakers end up getting their roommates to act in their films. We have an association with the theater program and we get students who want to be actors acting in our films uh, we you know the students in our program don't necessarily want to specialize in sound so we work with students who really are keen on sounds and their films all end up being that much better because of these collaborations that we have we have very small class sizes and so there's a lot more one-on-one -on -one with the students in our program Awesome. Um, another question very quickly. We have two minutes left, so keep keep time in mind here. How many screenwriting courses are there and how much does the program focus on screenwriting? There's just the one in the fall, which is sort of a half course where you, uh, you write the, the short screenplays that we produce in the winter. So it would be a half semester, technically half a semester on screenwriting. And then that get, carries over into the directing class where we work on the screenplays to develop them further. Okay, awesome. And in about 30 seconds, um, if you can answer these two, how much technical knowledge should a person have before entering the program and uh, do they need their own laptop or cameras? They don't need laptops or cameras. Uh, there's an advantage to having your own computer because then you could work at home. You don't have to come into school to do all of that extra work. So a lot of students do have their own laptops that are but they don't need the cameras you saw all our equipment and no like i said we've had theater students we've had uh, graphic design students people who and even film theory students who have no background shooting with cameras or working with lights or sound or any editing systems so uh, we start 
for in September as if everyone's starting from scratch and we move up from there. Awesome. So that will bring us to the end of our time. I want to thank Romy for his time here and the information that he's provided. That was super helpful for me too in my job. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you want to revisit this, it will be on our YouTube channel. And if you have uh, friends or any uh, peers who are interested in this but missed it, you can direct them to the YouTube. Um, and Romy, do you have your email on the last slide there just so they can? Yeah. Can you see it right now? Yeah. So there's Romy's contact information if you did want to reach out. Um, maybe access some of the films our students have made. I'll give you a second to take a picture of that. And then there's also this slide afterwards that you might want to reach out to people as well. So yeah, so fanchowc.ca slash connect, that would be an opportunity to connect with myself or one of my colleagues for an appointment. If you have broader questions about Fanshawe services, uh, other programs, any of that stuff. So you can email us or connect on the website there. So again, thank you for your time, Romy, and we'll we'll leave it there. And uh, okay, we'll call well, thank that you. info session. Great, thank you for everyone who was here today. It's, it's odd not seeing anyone, but thanks for attending. Okay, take care, folks.